My name is Mike Abe and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are out here with the Karayan 1, which last episode we sent on its way out to Minmus. We got actually a few things we want to do at Minmus, but right now we are in the need of making a bit of a mid-course correction burn. So there is our trajectory we're aiming for, and you can see an orbit there. That is a stranded Kerbal. Brooke Kerman is in that particular capsule, and we are definitely going to be attempting to rescue him. First, we have to get our trajectory intersecting with Minmus. Okay, we're getting pretty close. Don't quite have that Minmus intercept yet. Burn a little bit further here. Oh, oh, I saw it there for a second. Here it comes. Let's get a bit of a better look at this. Okay, okay, that's good. Let's get rid of the maneuver node and we'll do the rest of this with RCS just kind of puffing around. We want to just come up to the edge of Burrick's orbit here. And I'll just keep playing around with the RCS, thrusting forward, back. I'm actually even thrusting laterally now and again to uh, sort of get a radial component in. It does not take out here much in the way of energy to affect your trajectory too much. And while I'm doing this, why don't I talk about what's coming up in the episode. The main thing in this particular episode is going to be the launch of my last Dredge support vehicle. I'm going to have a total of three vehicles on their way to Dredge, two of them are already in these sort of pre-orbits waiting to get back to their periapsis so they can do their dress injection burns. I gotta put one more out there, put it out there, and we'll talk about it when the time comes. I'm also gonna get another crew out to uh, Kerbin Station in preparation for the Karayan 3's return. I wanna return everybody that's on the Karayan 3 back down to the surface and uh, crew it up again, but I think I've got this pretty much all set. It's going to be another six days until the Cryon 1 is at Minmus. So that's not going to be in this episode. Clearly that'll be for a future episode. So let's get ourselves back down to the surface. Well, I suppose just briefly to the surface because we are on our way to Kerbin Station in the Dream Chaser with Jeb and Bill and McNand, who are going to be our next crew for the Karayan 3. Jeb and Bill haven't been in space for quite some time. It's about time I got them back. Get some vacuum under their feet. And also McNand freshly minted into level 1 sign. Oh, a message. Oh, this must... Oh, it's not! Oh, okay. I deleted that pretty quick. I thought that was going to be a just a message that the ves this vessel was completed, um, but in fact, it was a message saying that my altimetry scan and biome scan of Moho contract is now complete. Great, so I'll have to make a point of picking up another contract. That should free up another slot there. But anyway, these folks are on their way to Kerbin Station to form the next crew. Uh, I've had the dream chaser here built for some time but i pushed it back at, uh because i was getting these dress vessels out but it actually is, it's a few days until the next dress vessel is coming out and so i had a little bit of a window to to shoot this thing out so i thought i might as well do that we are now in orbit and of course soon after this we set up our burn to rendezvous with curb and station but then after that i had a little bit of time before we ended up Rendezvous with Kerbin Station, so I thought, why don't I pop over to Mission Control and check out what contracts are available. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at this. Do a multispectral scan of the Moon and Minmus. And then afterwards, deorbit the two spacecrafts. That's what it looks like it wants us to do. Now, of course, this is a ScanSat contract coming at us through the Contract Configurator mod. And I've already got, of course, biomaps of both the Moon and Minmus. So satellites are still out there. But this is making me think, do I just need to pop out there and deorbit those things and I'll satisfy the requirements of this contract? These contracts don't require the vessels to be new vessels. Oh, well, I think it's worth finding out. So I'm going to uh, accept this guy. And then once I'm done with the whole docking and getting to Kerbin Station, we'll pop out 
to the moon and to miss and check out what we can do to fulfill this contract. Now the Karayan Thrift is not here yet of course, it's still in the midst of doing all of its arrow breaking maneuvers to slow itself down on its trip back into Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we're going to have to wait for it. And once it's here, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing with it anyway. I mean, I suppose I should get, I kind of want to get out to the moon. So I think one of the things I'll do with it is get it out to the moon. There's a lander out uh, in orbit around the moon. It needs some prep. It needs to be refueled and stuff. But there's definitely some more moon landings I would want to do. Some more anomalies there to visit. Some more science to collect. So that would be a worthwhile thing to do. I still have another dream waiver. Uh, in orbit about Kerbin in an inclined orbit unfortunately of about 20 degrees um, I could send the Karayan out to go get it and bring it back that would be something to do once I've freed up some docking ports on Kerbin station so I don't know, we'll cross that bridge I suppose when we get to it. it won't be in this episode anyway I guess I should also be talking about while we're doing this too is about 1.2 um, I guess exciting news review. Well, at the time of this recording, the 1.2 pre-release is out. Lots of people are playing it. This is not the 1.2 pre-release. This is still 1.1.3. But I have been asked, what am I going to be doing with 1.2 coming out with this particular series? And the short answer is I don't know. Uh, 1.2 comes out with some pretty cool upgrades. I've seen some other people previewing them. Um, especially when it comes to uncrewed vessels, and you know, if you've been watching any of these episodes, that I really do like working with uncrewed vessels, and it's put in some new features that I think are pretty exciting, but those new features rather overlap with remote tech, and I'm not quite sure how the folks that designed remote tech are going to adapt remote tech to work within 1.2. So I think what I'm going to be doing is just waiting for now. First of all, I am going to wait until the pre-release part is over and people have found bugs and bugs have been squashed. So that likely means I'll be waiting until, uh, you know, 1.2.1 uh, coming out. And then I want to see what mods, especially mods like Remote Tech and ScanSat too, that's another mod that might get affected by 1.2. See what they do. But in the meantime, I'm going to stick with what I got. I'm going to continue to play this there have no plans really to be ending this particular series anytime soon and there we are we are docked we'll pop out to those mapping satellites around the moon and mimis in just a moment but speaking of the Karayan 3 i actually had to deal with it first because it was coming in for its second arrow breaking pass bringing down the period of its orbit and slowing itself down. Eventually we'll get to the point where we can make a nice cheap rendezvous with curb and station. But it's not going to be making its next arrow breaking pass for a couple of days. So with this, once this was out of the way, let's head out to the moon. So here we are with MapSat 5. And I'm just going over the particulars of the contract here. Already Gone Green is a contract that's to, or a requirement to scan at least 50% of the moon, so that's good. But I do need to get a specific orbit before I can get going with anything else. It's saying my altitude needs to be in around 235 kilometers, very close to being circular, and I need an inclination of about 87 degrees. Thankfully, I do still have some fuel left aboard, and... That's really not too different from the orbit that I'm currently in. So, with just a few burns, we were able to get the contract requirements for the orbit out of the way. There we go. Okay, so all of the orbital requirements are now green. That's good. I guess all we have left to do here is to perform the deorbit burn. Alrighty, our periapsis just went negative. Now all we have to do is ride this thing down to its inevitable fate. Boom. Oh wait, that part of the contract didn't go green. 
It doesn't say that I destroyed the vessel, though. <laughs> Clearly, that vessel was plenty destroyed. Um, well, not much I can do about that now. <laughs> There's no going back. Okay, well, why don't we get ourselves the Minmus and Mapsat 4 and try and do the same thing. And at Minmus, things are even getting weirder with this contract. Here I am. I'm just finishing off my final burn to meet the orbital parameters. And looking over here at Kerbal Engineer, you can see that both my apoapsis and periapsis are very close to 250 kilometers. My inclination is just under 77.1 degrees. And all of that clearly matches the orbital requirements of the contract. But as you can see here, those orbital requirements are not going green. I don't get it. Oh, wait a second here. There's a message. What's this notification say? Whoa, it's saying the contract is complete? I've been awarded about 60,000 curb bucks, 25 science, and 27 reputation. Let's scroll this up. Is that the same? I'm going to bring this back. Come on, bring it. There it is. Yep, they're the same. That's this contract. Okay, I don't understand that. We'll delete that. I'm supposed to still deorbit this thing. Nothing here has gone green, but... Apparently, oh yeah, the, the menu bar on the contract plus window is green. That's awful strange. Well, as you can see, I've deorbited this thing anyway. I don't want to be accused of cheating. We'll get back to the Space Center and move on to the main event. This is the Drez 1. And I'll get into what its mission is in just a little bit, but... It's going to Dress. I guess that's fairly obvious from its name. And like the previous two vessels that I have on its way to Dress, it needs to go into a particular parking orbit, the parameters for which I get from the Window Transfer Planner mod. This parking orbit needs to be at a 5.1 degree inclination, but it also needs a specific angle to prograde. And what that means is I need to launch at a particular time. Now. I've done this twice before, including last episode, and I went into ex uh, explaining how you calculate what time it is that you need to launch. But in the previous two launches, I've actually launched at night and gone to the ascending node. This time, however, you can see that it is during the day. So I'm actually going to the descending node, so I'm going to be launching five, at a five degree inclination towards the south of east. And the magic time that I'm waiting for is 017, just after whatever weird thing determines when the Kerbin day starts. But 17 minutes after the start of the Kerbin day. And here we are, we're ready to go. So three, two, one. And we're away. Drez 1 on its way to Drez, well, on its way into a parking orbit, which will eventually get it towards Drez. <laughs> okay, why don't we talk about what the mission is. So this is, as you can see, uncrewed. Um, this is really a collection of probes that's underneath that rather strange looking fairing that are up there at the top. Uh, so let's talk about what these probes are going to be doing. Number one, I do have a remote tech satellite communication contract to cover DREZ with satellite communication. So I have uh, satellites that are going to put themselves into orbit, spread themselves around. You've seen me do communication satellites before, except this time we're going to be doing it at DREZ and that's going to hopefully fulfill the requirements for that contract. Uh, I also have a contract to be doing mapping. I can't remember. I think there's altimeter ones and biome scans. I also have the resource scanner along. And uh, so I have a, uh, a mapping satellite, and it's going to be mapping uh, to fulfill the contract, but also just to generate the map. And finally, I have a, a pair of uncrewed landers. Some lander probes that are going to land Andres again, hopefully. <laughs> this is all in theory at this point. So between the actual crude lander that I have going to Dres and then these two, I hope to land in three different biomes on Dres and hopefully collect a respectable amount of science. 
Now, you might be rightfully wondering at this point, just, just how many probes do I have underneath this fairing? Well, the answer to that question actually is just three. Um, satellites can perform multiple duties. Uh, so there's no reason a satellite can't be both a communication satellite and a mapping satellite. There's no reason why a lander can't live a brief life as a communication satellite. And all you need for communication satellites are three satellites that are capable of communicating with each other, and at least one of them being able to communicate back home. All of the deployment, by the way, and the staging of the fairings, deployment of antennas, and those solar panels were all taken care of by smart parts. Now that I have action groups unlocked, they're really, really handy. That means I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about forgetting to do these things. And you can see those three gigantic solar panels. They are not superfluous. They are going to be necessary once all the scanning and sc scanning equipment that's aboard this thing is up and going. Uh, out by Dres, a lot less sunlight, so you have to work that in with the inverse square law. You know, I've talked about the inverse square law before. I don't think I've ever really gone over the maths. Why don't we take the opportunity to just go over the maths real quick here. It's actually really simple to use the inverse square law. Take Kerbin's distance from the sun. Kerbin is 14 million kilometers from the sun. You can look that up. Then you can look up uh, Dres's orbit. And uh, Dres is in uh, an ellipt a bit of an elliptical orbit. So you take its apoapsis, its worst case scenario. And its apoapsis is 46,760,000 kilometers from the sun. Take two, those two numbers and divide them. And you'll get 3.34. Now, invert that, right? One divided by 3.34, that's the inverse part. 0.299. Now square that, that's the inverse square law, right? Get it? So that gets you 0 0.090, or about 9%. And what this tells you is that your solar panels are going to be about as 9% as efficient as what they are in and around Kerbin. So whatever they tell you as far as their electricity production is in the BAB, you have to multiply that by about 9%, take 9% of that. Or if you flip that around again, take the 0 0.09 and flip that around again, you get about 11 times, 11. That means you need about 11 times the solar panels. So yeah, I need these solar panels. And with that, we have now inserted ourselves into our parking orbit. So it's now time to plot out our trans dres injection burn you've seen me do this a few times before i take the raw information that comes from the window transfer planner mod and then start to modify a little bit till i get my encounter but i do want to talk about i, I am kind of zeroing in and getting more efficient at this so the first thing i do is i use the, the way it shows the ejection angle i use that to help me place the node raleigh here so right about there it should be about two degrees ahead of that line because we're still about two and a half days from now before we have to perform the burn and then I put in the amount of prograde that the window transfer planner tells me it's supposed to be and then I move it ahead to when the burn is supposed to be and then I end up taking a look at where we're at and usually I have to put in a little bit of normal here or there to try and move in this case is the descending node out there so I start adding in a bit of positive normal now I want to get there in about 312 days that's 314 days so I'm getting out there a little too slowly so I add a bit of prograde which of course messes things up a bit so a little bit take a little bit of that normal off take a look 310 days that's pretty good so now I need to add a bit of radial but to do that what you do is you adjust the timing of exactly when you do the burn. So I'm just moving ahead a few seconds or back a few seconds, not very far, trying to get those close encounter indicators to come closer together. Again, I can see I've moved the descending node off, so add some normal on there, push that descending node back. You can see I'm really close. 312 days, oh, that's sweet. Okay, a little bit more with adjusting the timing Oop, the other way. And I just kept going like that. Again, I'm using the prograde to adjust how quickly I get out there. 
I'm using the normal to move that descending node forward and backward so that it is at Dres's orbit. And then I'm using the timing of the burn to get those close encounters to zero those close encounter indicators closer together. And after a little bit more playing around, I ended up with this bur the burn that I wanted so that my encounter with Drez is 312 days from now. Now this burn is going to be eight minutes and 47 seconds. I don't want to do that in just one burn. So like we did with the previous two vessels on their way out to Drez, we're gonna split this into two, doing sort of a, a pre-burn to create an orbit with a period that will bring us back here in two and a half days to perform the rest of the burn at that time. And you see me set this one up before, so I'm just going to actually cut to talking about the vessel. Alrighty, so let's zoom in here. And we'll use the camera focus changer to go to different parts. So the top part here is the main probe. It's going to be a mapping probe and communication satellite. So I have a multi-spectral analyzer there for mapping biomes. Then we'll we'll roll this. And there is the high res altimetry scanner. So those are the two main pieces of equipment that come from ScanSat. And then back here we have the stock resource scanner. So again, that's attached to the main body. But then I really want to talk about back here, we got two uh, landing probes, two little landers. They're chock full of science and stuff like that. They got a little bit of solar, but the solar is really there for navigation. Once I get into transmitting science, I got some fuel cells on here. So hopefully I won't need those until I'm down on the surface. There's one of the fuel cells. So once these guys are down, they won't be doing any hopping or anything. They'll probably just use up all their fuels, transmitting science. And then I got a key part that I really do want to show you here. There it is. Let's zoom in on it. A little too close. This is the XT. Let's click on it. XTLB Landatron box. This part is really important to perform the landing because I am playing with remote tech and we're going to be dealing with a signal delay that's going to be measured in minutes, not in seconds. And so landing it under control, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So we ha I have a mod installed that I haven't installed for a long time called uh, XT Landertron. And I got Tantley here. She's going to give us a little bit of a demonstration on how it works. So we're here in Kerbal Construction Times Simulation Mode, and I got the Landertron box right here on the side. We'll put this menu, we'll pin it over, put it by Tamley because it's going to be integral to her surviving this, even though this is a simulation, she can't really get killed. And you can see I got a couple of those Rockomax radial engines, some landing legs, and that's about it. So we're going to put on the SOS, uh, SAS <laughs> and throttle up and stage and go. There we are, we are off. And I don't want to burn off too much of my fuel because fuel is going to be an integral component to getting back down, but we're gonna use the Landatron box to get us back down. Okay, there we go, we're up. The Landatron is already armed. I could disarm it, but I certainly do not want to do that. So we're falling and Landatron is gonna decide when is going to be the appropriate time, there it goes, to start this burn. <laughs> and the idea is we do a perfect suicide burn. Ooh, that was a little rough. Um, I think that is because Landatron takes the vacuum thrust of these engines, not their in-atmosphere thrust, which is a little bit less, so I think that's why it hit a little hard. I hope that's it. But we'll have to find out later when we're out towards Drez. If you're gonna use remote tech, and you're gonna have that signal delay and you gotta and you wanna land with uncrewed landers on worlds that are further out than either the moon or Minmus, then you really do need something like XG Landertron or write yourself a KOS script. 
I don't want to write a KOS script. I think the Landertron engines are nice and simple. I'm going to do that. And uh, there are other Landertron parts. The Landertron box is actually a little later in the tech tree. I've only unlocked it relatively recently. Earlier on, there are these, uh, they're like Separatron engines. In fact, they look exactly like Separatron engines. And in fact, while I'm mentioning, they look exactly like Separatron engines. I'm sure a lot of people notice that the Landertron box is really one of those atmospheric sensors. Uh, with uh, a 0.625 meter set of reaction wheels kind of embedded into it, and that's it. So yeah, the modeling, I guess, is a little bit lazy, but it's the function that I'm after for, not the aesthetic. But anyway, back to the uh, the Separatrons. Yeah, there are these little SRBs you fit on readily. They look just like Separatrons, except they have the additional thing of doing just what you saw that Landertron box do. The thing I like about the Landertron box, though, is they'll work with any engines and uh or any throttleable engines they won't work with srbs nice anyway as you can see we are performing this sort of pre-burn to put ourselves into this pre-orbit and what i am looking at is getting to the point where the period of this orbit or actually this is where i started realizing what i really need is the time to my periapsis is about three two and a half days because that's when I'm going to be doing my transdres injection we're getting pretty close to that right about now all right so we'll use a remote tech I'm gonna hit kill which just keeps our attitude the way it is get rid of the node okay we have three hours or two days three hours and 12 minutes to that maneuver so it makes sense to me then I want my periapsis to be that far away. So I'm just burning just little bits here. And what I'm looking at is my time to periapsis. And I'm going to keep burning until that matches with the time to the node. And that, just a little more. It's now at uh, two days, three hours, and 11 minutes to the node, I know, that's got it. Right there, that looks great. And of course, we're going to reset up our transdres injection burn, which turned out to be pretty easy. <laughs> I should have done this right from the beginning in my earlier ones as well. That's definitely the way to do it. It seems kind of obvious now, but yeah, we got this nailed. So, that's going to be in about two and a half days to perform that burn, so we can Close off all these things. We'll open up alarm clock here. Uh, move, oh, let's get rid of this. Okay, let's move this over and actually we'll add an alarm. So we'll be ready for this. But while I'm adding this alarm, I want to draw attention to what is coming up. We got the Karayan 3 here coming towards periapsis in just a couple of hours. That's for its next arrow breaking pass. So that's not a big deal. But then after that, less than the day, we got the completion of the Kermes 2 habitation module. That is another crude interplanetary explorer. This one's set to go out towards Eve, and just to spoil things, it, I got really lazy. It's remarkably like the Kermit's one, <laughs> just to spoil anything coming up. Then, in just a little over a day, we got the Transjez and Drez injection bird for the Kermit's one. And then in about two and a half days, we got the Transdres injection burns for the Kegel 5, our crude lander, and for the Drez 1. So these guys are going to be boom, 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 a little train, a little exodus heading out towards Drez, and that's all going to be for the next episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you then. Yeah.